ladies and gentlemen, Donald Duck! I dare proportion. Not quite. Uh uh. No, I'm afraid not. Well, we can't all be mathematically perfect. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I do want to do it. And now, a clip from that same movie that's probably a little more appropriate for this project. <laughs> the Parthenon, perhaps one of the most famous of early Greek buildings, contains many golden rectangles. So those are clips from an old movie called Donald in Math Magic Land. It's a great movie. I highly suggest you watch it. It's 30 minutes long. You can watch all the parts on, on YouTube. And I probably learned more about math from that movie than I ever did anywhere else. So what's going on in that clip I just showed is it's demonstrating an ancient formula called Phi, P-H-I. And it's also called the golden ratio that ancient mathematicians were aware of. And they used it in art and architecture and everything. And it's still used today. It's used all the time. Now the actual ratio is one to one point. That's the actual number. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is. Why? Well, you can look it up. Uh, and there's plenty of sites where you can get information on the golden ratio. It's enough to say that uh, it's really handy to have a way of determining that in things that you're building. And one of those ways to determine phi is to use this. This is a Fibonacci gauge or a Fibonacci calipers. And it's this really handy device. And what it does is it maintains that exact ratio of one to one point, or it's one to one point something. I don't know, something like that. But, well, let me show you how to use it. Here's my magic fortune telling box. You probably thought you'd never see that again. But <laughs> anyways, I just pulled it out because I wanted to see how close I was to the golden ratio. And what you can notice is that if I take, well, let's see. Okay, we'll take this dimension here, okay? Yeah, it's that. Okay, now let me, let me see if the other dimension is about that same size. And it is, I was pretty darn close. So anyways, that is the golden ratio. Well, at least that part of it is. So in other words, it just makes for a pleasing shape. So everybody is in on this game. Check out credit cards. Okay, let's see, what's the dimension of a credit card? Well, let's see, it's that wide by, hey, that tall. It's the golden ratio. And in addition to buildings and in paintings, you find the golden ratio in nature. And of course, you find it in woodworking. You'll find it in furniture design and shelf placement and uh, the height of furniture and the depth and the width and all of these things. Uh, making small boxes, you can use the golden ratio and I don't know, it just makes people like them that much better. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own set of golden calipers, a Fibonacci gauge. Now, of course, there's not a lot to the Fibonacci gauge. The only trick is to make sure that everything is cut to the exact dimensions for it to work properly. And I really wanna thank Mark Witsit, who actually designed this layout in SketchUp. And I'll put this on my website so you can download it as a PDF or a SketchUp if you prefer to do it that way. So what I've done is I'm gonna be using uh, lace wood for this. I had some scraps around and I thought it'd be a good chance to use it. I've milled this down to about a quarter inch thick and I've got four pieces that I'll just need to cut down to their exact sizes. Before I cut these boards to length, I've stacked up all four of them together and I wanna cut the end holes on each of them. Uh, it's a quarter inch over from the edge and I'll just do them all at once on drill press. I've stacked up all four of my boards again. This time they need a hole four and a quarter inches away from the first hole. And there's all four of my pieces. I've got them laid out about how they will go. So I wanna put a coat of lacquer on them, make them look nice, and then I will rivet them together. 
Well, I'm just waiting for those uh, pieces to dry now. And I was uh, here, here's a uh, check to see how old you are. I've listened to ser uh, listening to Sirius Radio on my TV and <laughs> missing persons. Hey, remember missing persons? <laughs> a crazy weekend out here. Look at this out here. Oh God, it's just raining and raining and raining and well, I don't know. It's a good weekend to work on a Fibonacci gauge and when I listen to missing persons. <laughs> I also want to thank Ian Waltonberry up in Canada who was the one who posted the picture of his Fibonacci gauge on my website and kind of got me curious about making a Fibonacci gauge. But Ian, I want to thank you also for uh, he sent me all of these rivets, these little brass rivets. These rivets have two parts. They have one that has, well, it's kind of a sleeve, and the other one fits into it. And you just pound them in together. So, you know, hopefully my holes are the right size. <laughs> and they will fit in like that. And then this piece I can put there. Now I take that, the pin part, set it in there, and uh, uh, grab a hammer and just start pounding it in. All right, so there we go. There is my first rivet. Well, there's the uh, completed Fibonacci gauge. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be really useful for, you know, just determining the right proportions of, you know, boxes, all sorts of things. Uh, again, I want to thank Mark and Ian and, well, everybody at Lumberjocks and so many people helped me out with this because I didn't really know what a Fibonacci gauge was, but it's fun to play with. And it's kind of fun to say Fibonacci, too. Huh. <laughs> Okay, uh, visit me at my website, woodworkingformeremortals.com. <laughs>